My biggest gripe with Solomon shoes is that they always seem to be built for trails that I don't have. But this is the Solomon Glidemax TR, and it just might be exactly what I've been waiting for. Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kofuzi and today I'm going to talk to you guys about the Solomon Glidemax TR. But before I give you my thoughts on this shoe, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that Solomon sent to me for the purpose of review, so I did not have to pay for them. However, nobody's paying me to make this video or to use the shoe, and no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with those disclosures out of the way, let's talk about the Solomon Glidemax TR. TR. First, let's go over some specs on the shoe. This is the tallest shoe that Solomon has ever made with a 38 millimeter stack height in the heel and a six millimeter drop giving us 32 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. And that midsole is made out of Solomon's energy foam. And that foam is shaped in Solomon's reverse camber rocker geometry. I think it's just their way of saying that it's curled up front, which should help make it a little bit easier to maneuver that 32 millimeters of stack height in the trails whenever you need to pick up the pace. On the outsole, we have Solomon's Conta Grip, which is a combination of a rubber compound and a specific pattern of lugs. And those lugs are 3.5 millimeters in depth. Up top, we have a little bit of a toe cap to protect you from any roots and rocks that you might be accidentally kicking when you're tired and not picking up your feet enough. And there is a little bit of a protective coating around the base of the shoe that goes all the way around to help keep some of the water from getting into the shoe. But in the exposed area of the the upper material looks like it's a dual layer mesh system here which is nice and breathable and has a fair amount of padding in here which I think kind of goes along well with the more comfort oriented ride that this shoe provides. The tongue is kind of uh, a little bit on the heavier padded side uh, and there isn't a gusset on it so in my experience uh, this tongue did wobble around a little bit more than I liked but the padding in the back of the heel was nice and comfy and I think kind of in the just right category. Not too much, not too little, enough to make it feel really plush when you're putting the shoe on and it helped make the shoe fit really nicely on top of the heel. But it wasn't so much that it made it feel like there was a sweat sponge back there or that it was anything that was uh, on the too puffy side. As far as rigidity in this heel cup, there is a little bit that's back here, but it's not like it's super hard plastic armor. Again, I feel like it's just right for the kind of shoe and the types of running that you're intended to do in the Glide Max Trail. As far as fit goes, I felt like that there was a little bit more generous of a fit, especially when you consider that this is a Solomon shoe. So I felt like my foot had enough room in the toe box, but yet it was still much more snug than a lot of the other trail shoes that I've been running in. And that helps maintain that sense of confidence when the terrain gets a little bit more technical or when you're picking up the pace. Altogether, this shoe comes in at a weight of 286 grams and 10.0 ounces. All right, so that's what the specs are. Let's talk about what it was actually like to run in the shoe. I think that the energy foam is really nice in this shoe. There was a nice amount of cushion and yet a nice amount of springiness in it as well. It's not the softest shoe that I've ever run in on the trails, but as far as Solomon goes, this is definitely the most cushioned and most comfortable running experience that I've ever had. The six millimeter drop makes it feel nice and relaxed in a variety of conditions. Yet at the same time, the shoe still feels very nimble. Overall, the shoe just puts a smile on my face and I feel like I could just run in it all day long. When it comes to muddy or messy conditions, I say it's pretty good, but if it's gonna get really nasty out there, I think I'd probably reach for the Solomon Sense Ride 5. But for the most part, for a lot of the trails and a lot of the types of weather conditions that I experience here in the northern part of the Midwest, the Glide Max Trail is the type of trail shoe that I'm looking for for most of the days where I'm out there in the woods or on the trails. And the other thing is, 
This shoe also has pretty good road manners too. So if you need to do a little bit of road to trail or maybe your ultra marathon goes for a little bit on some paved surfaces, I think this shoe is going to be a really fun choice for you. All right, so let's get to some concluding thoughts. And for this, I'm going to phone a friend and bring in Orion Clayton for some concluding thoughts. All right, Ryan, thanks for joining me and helping me out phoning a friend to help me with some final thoughts for this Solomon Glide Max Trail. You ran in this shoe and you've also reviewed it too. What did you think overall? Overall, I thought that this shoe uh, was a really interesting kind of like new direction for Solomon. Um, and I'm very happy to see them kind of go after more of uh, like a long distance, ultra distance sort of like trail, like get the long miles in, uh, long hours in. I feel like they haven't really had a really great offering for the masses uh, until this shoe, honestly. But now with this shoe, I think that you can get some really long miles in it and be comfortable for a long time in it. So I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've been enjoying it too. And I, and I think that's an interesting way to think of it because I've always kind of thought of a lot of Solomon shoes for me as being a little bit inaccessible because I always feel like they're built for trails that aren't like around me here in the Midwest. I know you're in the Midwest, but when I ran in the Glide Max Trail, I was like, all right, this is a shoe that's built for like my kind of running, which I usually like to just kind of like go easy for about 90 minutes to two hours on trails that I have reasonably close to me. And I felt like finally, this is a shoe that kind of like fits. This is, they made one like for me. Yeah, definitely. It ticks the box uh, for kind of like lots of different types of trails. I think, you know, a lot of the, the Solomon shoes, like you mentioned, um, aimed at a certain type of trail. And I think that's pretty accurate. Like it's really, you know, Solomon is one of the more nimble shoes, uh, really great in technical uh, areas where there's a lot of rocks and you're kind of like jumping all around and you have to have really, really like uh, sure footing and be really confident um, in just how your shoe's going to perform. You know, with this shoe, it follows in those same uh, that, that same vein of being just really high quality. Um, but then you've also got um, this like kind of like extra opportunity I feel where it's like you can you can really go for a really long time be comfortable yeah it was a fun shoe to run in let's talk about this let's say if you're you're wondering about this glide max trail shoe like who's this shoe for or like what kind of trail running would you say it's best for yeah I think it's it's definitely meant for long distances it's meant for the other thing it's meant for is like kind of like well-groomed trails uh as far as the lugs on the bottom of them uh things like three and a half millimeters uh and so it's it's not really meant for that really like kind of like sloppy wet conditions that you can find when it's like pouring down rain or you've got a really nasty trail uh, that you're trying to navigate. It's meant more, uh, in my opinion, uh, during my testing for kind of like well-groomed, definitely drier trails. The other thing is kind of meant for more moderate to cooler weather, in my opinion, um, just because of the upper, uh, the way they've built the upper. It can get really hot, like if it's, if it's hot weather out, um, um, and it holds water too because there's a lot of padding kind of in the tongue. All right. Now, let's say I was going to pick this shoe up and I wanted to build a little bit of a rotation either around it or with it. Uh, name a shoe for me, and I'll name one too, but I'll let you go first, that you think could pair well with the Glide Max Trail. Yeah. So if you wanted to have a rotation and stick within Solomon uh, and you wanted something that uh, performed better when it got wet out and rainy, like I would go with like the like the Solomon Pulsar SG probably. It will give you a little bit of the same underfoot feeling, but just be able to grip a little bit better when it gets wet out there. All right, interesting. I haven't tried that one, but I have, and I'll give another Solomon example uh, of shoe that I think could pair well with it is uh, the Sense Ride 5. Yeah. So that one for me, I only like when it's really, like really muddy and nasty right. out. And like when it's dry, I feel like it's, I don't think it has really good road manners. So it's not a really a road to trail shoe for me. And if it's like dry pack, well groomed, I feel like it's a little bit too firm, but when it's nasty out, I feel like that shoe's perfect. So I feel like dry, good conditions, I'll go with the Glide Max. And then, um, then for nasty conditions, I'll, I'd reach for that Sense Ride 5. Yeah, and that's funny that you mentioned that because I actually, I actually wrote down two and the Sense Ride 5 was the next <laughs> one. I feel like that one right. is a little bit more, uh, it's, a little, it's built a little bit more for exactly what you were saying. Um, just more mm -hmm. kind of like, 
where you need a shoe that's going to inspire a little bit more confidence every time you take a step. Also, the different laces. It's got the quick quick lace system. Mm. So uh, there's just some there's some benefits there. But that shoe would also pair very nicely with the Glide Max Trail. Cool. All right, let's talk about some buying guide options for this shoe. It just came out pretty recently. This is the first year that this shoe's been out, so there's not like a, a last year's version you can look mm -hmm. at. And the retail right now in the U.S. is 160 bucks. Um, what What do you think about that price? And like, why don't you th give me like one potential like alternative that you might be able to look at if you're like looking at this shoe and you also want to kind of look around at what else is in the market? Yeah, I think 160 is fair. I think the Energy Foam. Uh, my experience hasn't flattened out like some of their other shoes have that are meant more for like ultra ultra distance trail runners. Um, I think the energy foam is going to last a long time. I think the outsole, the contra grip outsole, is going to be um, good. And then the upper is built like a very traditional road shoe kind of, or a traditional trail shoe. I think you're going to get a lot of miles out of it for 160 bucks. And one that is, I think, in my mind, a pretty obvious comparison would be the speed goat five um pretty close in price and then a lot of the same sort of features in the midsole and outsole um the uppers are very different though with the in with the speed goat to the glide max and so if you're looking for something keep your foot a little bit cooler uh upper that'll dry out a lot faster uh maybe try the speed goat out yeah, I think that's a good one. Like, I am I look at this shoe and I'm like, $160 shoe. Like, every other shoe is like $160 this year. And I'm kind of like super annoyed about that. But I'm also like, th I think this one deserves it. Like, I feel like the 160 mm -hmm. is just about right for this shoe. Because there is a lot that you're getting in it. And you're going to be able to have really long adventures in it. And I feel like that's something that's worth paying a little bit extra for. And I think they're delivering on this one, but I think another alternative for me as someone that's more of a Rhodes guy, I think that with the kind of larger stack in this Glide Max, um, I would also compare it to the fresh foam, more trail version three, which is kind of like mm -hmm. new bounces, like super stack road shoe that they just put like giant V room lugs on the bottom. <laughs> um, the, the ride is really different for sure. Yeah. And that one's a lot heavier and it's a little, not, I don't want to say it's clunkier, but it's just like, mm -hmm. it looks like a bigger shoe and it is a bigger shoe, but I also just feel like, you know, for someone that's looking to get out there and enjoy like a couple hours on the trails and not really looking to barrel through them not looking to you know set any fkts but just wants to have a good adventure i feel like that's a pretty good one and that one also comes in at 160. that's going to be it for me and ryan talking about the glide max trail let us know in the comments if you have any other questions or better yet come by the live stream that i do monday through friday right here on youtube over on the kofuzi run club channel i love to talk to you guys in the chat Ryan, thanks for stopping by and helping me out uh, with some final thoughts on this shoe. Let them know where they could find not only your review of the Solomon Glide Max Trail in case they want to get more detailed thoughts from you, but where else you might be posting content. Yeah, so I do have a YouTube channel as well. Mm -hmm. uh, post a lot of ultra running and trail running content as well as shoe reviews. So you can find me on YouTube, just Ryan Clayton. Uh, Instagram as well, same name. Uh, so yeah, those are the two best places. All right, guys, thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully, you guys are staying safe out there on your runs, and we'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?